The Bible, a book filled with profound prophecies, speaks of powerful angelic beings. These aren't ordinary angels, but mighty figures restrained beneath the earth. Revelation 9 describes four such angels, shrouded in mystery and immense power. They are currently chained in a specific location nestled within the Euphrates River, a place steeped in history that once divided ancient Assyria and Israel. These four formidable angels wait in silent captivity. They're released destined for a precise moment predetermined by God. Unaware of these terrifying beings slumbering beneath the earth, the world continues its relentless course. These fallen angels, distinct from freely roaming fallen angels like Lucifer, are considered especially terrible offenders. Their eventual release, hinted at in Revelation 9, carries immense significance. Scripture reveals a complex cosmos filled with unseen beings and unimaginable horrors. Within this unseen realm, the four angels stand out as harbingers of a pivotal event that will reshape the world. These events are orchestrated by a powerful God and will redefine the course of history. The sheer length of their wait, the profound silence surrounding their captivity, is a stark reminder of unseen battles and preparations happening just beyond our sight. Thousands of years have passed, with countless people crossing the Euphrates River, utterly unaware of these captive angels. Prepared for a specific moment, they carry the weight of prophecy and the inevitable execution of God's will. The Bible reveals that beneath our very feet lie secrets and forces that defy human understanding. As the clock ticks towards their release, anticipation builds to a crescendo that will undoubtedly shake the foundations of the world. Referenced in Revelation 9, 12, 21, the passage describes the release of these four angels, prepared for a specific time to kill a third of humanity. Their power is immense, and unlike the demonic locusts mentioned earlier, these angels possess the authority to directly cause death. Their release unleashes a devastating judgment the decimation of a third of mankind. This period, known as the Great Tribulation, is further supported by the description of a massive army numbering 200 million. The imagery is vivid and terrifying. This immense cavalry is equipped with the power to kill through fire, smoke, and brimstone issuing from their horses' mouths. This paints a clear picture of the immense scale and severity of God's wrath. However, amidst the horror, a profound and unsettling truth about human nature emerges. Despite witnessing the unfathomable power of God's judgment, the survivors remain unrepentant. Their hearts hardened, they cling to idolatry and persist in their transgressions. This highlights a central theme of Revelation, the enduring call to repentance and the tragic refusal of many to heed it. The persistence of sin idolatry, sorcery, immorality, and theft even in the face of clear divine signs reflects humanity's deep-seated rebellion against God. It illustrates the extent to which sin can blind us, causing us to ignore warnings and opportunities for redemption. This section of Revelation serves not only as a prophetic warning, but also as a poignant commentary on human stubbornness and the urgent need for spiritual awakening. Looking closer at the final verse, Revelation 9.21, it stands as a sobering indictment. They repented not of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. This verse is strikingly relevant to our contemporary society. The transgressions listed here murder, sorcery symbolizing harmful practices, sexual immorality, and theft find direct parallels in today's world. The persistence of these sins underscores a timeless battle against moral decay and the human tendency to resist repentance, even in the face of potential consequences. Murder, a grievous act that extinguishes the sanctity of life, continues to plague our society. Sorcery, in a modern context, can be seen as drug abuse and the pursuit of forbidden knowledge that entrap people in destructive cycles. Sexual immorality finds new expressions in the modern age, fueled by technology and a culture that often normalizes harmful behaviors. Theft, whether of physical possessions or intangible things like intellectual property or personal data, remains a prevalent issue. While Revelation paints a picture of judgment, Chapter 7 offers a divine interlude, a sacred pause. It's a parenthesis within the grand narrative, offering extra information crucial for understanding. 
This moment of stillness amidst the storm highlights God's control over history, even when chaos seems to reign. The world often whispers that randomness dictates our lives, but the Bible proclaims that nothing just happens Revelation 7 reveals a God who guides history's course. Following the turmoil of the six seals, chapter 7 unfolds like a scroll within a scroll, within a scroll, offering a vision of hope and protection. We see God's servants being marked and set aside for deliverance. This divine interlude isn't just a break in the action, it's a revelation within the revelation, a moment of clarity amidst the mystery. It tells a story of salvation for a multitude, from every nation and tongue, an assurance that even in wrath, God's arms remain open to those who are by His. Chapter 7 answers the desperate cry of chapter 6, who can withstand the answer lies not in human might, but in God's sovereignty and saving grace. Revelation 7 1 4 describes four angels standing at the earth's corners, holding back the four winds. These aren't mere geographical markers, they represent the full compass of the world north, south, east, and west. Imagine these mighty angels positioned at the earth's extremities, commanding the elements, holding back the four winds that symbolize God's judgment. These winds are fierce and formidable, not just weather phenomena, but the very breath of divine justice. They blow with supernatural authority and global scope, as prophesied in Jeremiah 49, 36. The angels restrain these winds until God's servants are sealed, signifying their protection during the coming tribulation. Passages like Jeremiah 49, 36 and Daniel 7, 2 depict these winds scattering nations and stirring the great sea. This imagery reminds us that nothing happens by chance God holds the reins of history. He will send angels, just as he did in the days of John the Revelator, to restrain these winds until his chosen time. Chapter 7 of Revelation offers a glimpse of hope amidst the prophecies of judgment. John describes a radiant angel ascending, wielding the seal of the living God, a mark signifying God's breath and protection. This angel commands four other angels stationed at Earth's cardinal points north, south, east, and west to hold back the winds of judgment. Their mission to wait until God's servants are sealed. This seal isn't a mere symbol of authority like those used by earthly kings. It's an imprint carrying the weight of God's protection, signifying security, permanence, and divine ownership. The passage reveals that 144,000 individuals will be sealed each one marked with God's claim. But here's a surprising truth the concept of a seal extends beyond this specific group. The Bible speaks of believers in Christ being sealed today. Ephesians 1 13, 14 tells us that those who heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. If you are a follower of Christ, you are enveloped by God's grace. You carry the seal of the Holy Spirit within you. No matter your past or lack of earthly love, you are claimed by God. He places His seal upon you at rebirth, authenticating you and promising a glorious eternal destination. This seal serves as a guarantee of your eternal safety and future redemption. Ephesians tells us it's the Holy Spirit Himself who seals us until the day of redemption. The Spirit, prophesied by Jesus, marks you for heaven. The lesson from Revelation 7 is clear even amidst chaos and apparent doom, nothing happens by chance. While the narrative portrays scenes of darkness, with figures like the Antichrist seemingly in control, we must remember God's hand remains firmly on the reins. Behind the scenes of earthly turmoil, He meticulously orchestrates every event. If you found this video enjoyable, please consider liking and sharing it. Additionally, subscribing to this channel will ensure that you receive more updates in the future. Thank you.